So good morning or good night, depending on where you are. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Doing a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today we're joined by Barbara Blackthorne. She's the lead singer of the band Empress. And they just released an album last month, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's called Faith Weaver. And we're all here to talk about it and talk about music and other stuff. So first of all, uh, Barbara, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, thank you for for jo for joining me. So yeah, I was listening to the album, and you know, it's it's there's a lot of like uh, symphonic metal. I thought of bands like The Nightwish, uh, Lacuna Coils, and other types of bands, but with your own style. Uh, but yeah, you you do have a great voice. So uh, I know you. this is your your this is your debut album. So uh, how did the band get together? Yeah, it's funny. It actually started off as a, a jam project between our drummer and our two guitarists. Um, at the time, there was no like set direction, although Vlad, the uh, the guitarist and our primary songwriter, he kind of wanted it to go in more of a symphonic direction. And they kind of were doing this for like about a year or so before they found me online and invited me in for an audition. Uh, that night, they offered me the position of lead vocalist. And then the following week, we brought in our bassist, Nick. And um, it's with the addition of the two of us that I think that the sound really took shape where it kind of moved more from like, you know, Symphony X and bands like that, which are still a huge influence on us. But we did get some more of those influences from bands like Nightwish and Epica and, and whatnot um, and got more of that symphonic direction. So they, how, how did, did you have like an ad online or how, how, how did they find you? Yeah. So I was on this website for a while uh, called Band Mix, which you can go on to and just kind of like, you know, if you're looking for a band or you're just looking for other musicians to play with. Um, so I was on there for a while and I almost deleted my profile before Vlad uh, reached out to me. So I'm glad I didn't. Nice. So uh, what what song did you use to like for the, you know, for the present, you know, when you came yeah. with them, when they did the audition, what song did you play? I did. Um, we actually did Unleashed from Epica as my audition song. Nice, nice. So uh, growing up for you, uh, what were your main musical influences, both in music and uh, vocally? Yeah, uh, growing up, honestly, my, my first big influence was uh, Sarah Brightman. Um, I had heard Phantom of the Opera, you know, the original Broadway cast recording when I was 12. And when I listened to it, I'm like, that's the way I want to sing. So she was huge on me as a, you know, when I was very beginning. Uh, and then as a teenager, obviously, Van, uh, someone like Tarja Tarunin is, uh, I, I don't know too many people who don't cite her. You know, she's a legend for a reason. Uh, Elisa Martin from Dark Moor is a major, major influence on me. Um, I'd say Simone Simmons. Um, yeah, just like the ones that you typically think of, I suppose, the, you know, they're influential for a reason. They're they're just powerhouse vocalists. Yeah. And did the band, were they auditioning uh, only female singers or or did they did they, did they, they, they just decide on that moment? Yeah, no, they actually had, um, I, I think, more male vocalists try out that they were considering than female. I think there was only one other girl that they had considered so um they weren't really thinking that way but when they brought me in they just felt like it fit yeah it fits so i'm gonna show the artwork of the album uh or the album here is the fate weaver empress and this reminds me a lot of, of like a final fantasy video game <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> yes it's a nice little vibe the what definitely has that vibe <laughs> yeah it has that vibe so who who worked on this artwork yeah, so um, Joseph Muir, our, our uh, guitarist, he actually worked with, and forgive me if I'm, uh, you know, not doing this name justice, uh, Ningyan Hugh. Um, yeah, I so yeah, wouldn't make it justice either. Yeah, <laughs> they, um, they, yeah, they worked together. Um, you know, Joseph worked conceptually with this artist, and the two of them kind of brought this to life. So, yeah, it was very much like Joseph's uh, brainchild. Nice. So how, being a new band, uh, how are you seeing the, the fans, the people react to your music? Oh, it's been amazing. I honestly, we, we've been working on this music um, for about a year or two because, you know, the pandemic and whatnot, we had to push it back. So the more we pushed it back, I think the more anxious we got about sharing it and being kind of being like, all right, 
we really like it, but we hope everyone likes it as much as we do. And so the response has been overwhelming, like just knowing that, um, you know, hearing so much positivity and so many kind words and, and all the, the wonderful reactions and responses we've seen. It's, it's just, it's really been humbling and just so overwhelming. Nice. And uh, for Faith Weaver, how, how long was the writing process for that album for you guys? Yeah, so um, before I joined the band, they had five songs that were kind of like, you know, mostly fleshed out that kind of came to more to completion once I joined. Um, and then the other four we kind of wrote over the uh, the last like year, I'd say. Um, and then, yeah, and then we just went ahead and recorded it. So the actual writing process, though, was probably like about like two years. Nice. Did, did, did you get to like write some lyrics as well? Oh, yeah, the, the lyrics are all me. Oh, uh, like which one was the first song that you wrote for this album? A Black Arcana. Black Arcana. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a cool song. And and I like the single Chimera, uh, Into the Gray and uh, Eventide. You know, they're they're all great singles. Uh, uh, which one, like if you had to, to talk to someone that doesn't know the band, which song would you say, listen to this so you can get like the gist of what the band is about? Sure. I would say probably Beyond the Sleep, actually, out of the whole album. Um, reason being, I feel like it kind of shows off vocally. I kind of do um, some more like of my operatic head voice kind of thing. There's belting, there's growling. Um, and then, you know, there's some wonderful guitar solos that, that Joe and Vlad laid down. So yeah, I think Beyond the Sleep probably shows off our sound overall. Nice, nice. So the, yeah, the, those are uh, cool songs indeed. So uh, when you're not like writing lyrics or, or singing, like uh, what are your other hobbies besides music? Well, I'm a huge nerd. So I love playing video games, um, specifically like RPGs, anything fantasy oriented, I'm, I absolutely adore. Um, I also enjoy reading fantasy novels. I love cooking. Um, I love horror movies. So things like that. I didn't know that cooking was considered nerd stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I am a nerd about it, but yeah. Nice. Do, do you like uh, get that, like try to do you like your own recipes or, or do you like follow cookbooks? Oh, yeah, kind of a little bit of both. Um, sometimes it's like, you know, if I'm feeling creative, I'll go ahead and try out an idea I might have for a dish, or maybe I'll like do my own interpretation of like another recipe I've tried. But I really love cookbooks. I love collecting cookbooks. Nice. And you said RPG games. Uh, which one is your favorite? I think Dragon Age Origins. I love that game. It like makes me emotional to this day. The game makes you emotional? It does. It's it's so nostalgic and uh, it's just so like such a journey. Yeah, I, I I love that game. Nice. Would you ever like consider like writing like music based on some of the video games that you play? Oh, yeah, we actually uh, the Fall of Kingdoms is based off of a game. Uh, one of my favorite games that I'm waiting to see if someone can guess which game it's about before I reveal it. So we'll see. No, the Fall of Kingdom. Well, it's not Kingdom of Hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, no yeah i haven't played video games in a while so i'm not gonna guess it okay. so yeah so you like uh doing that and so uh for this album which do you think was like the hardest song to to write uh and record like which one was gave you the most trouble i feel like chimera uh that was a song that was kind of in the works for a while because we felt like we had something really epic but because we felt so strongly about it we wanted it to be as perfect as it could be. So it took a while to kind of get it to where we wanted it to be. Um, and then vocally, I kind of tried to push myself a lot in the chorus and, and try out some new things for like the vocal bridge section, which is very ambient. Yeah. How do you, usually when you're going to sing, how, how do you warm up your voice? So like there's some like old warm ups and exercises that like my, uh, my vocal coaches of um, yesteryear have given me like, Usually I love doing arpeggios and just like, you know, the typical stuff like that. Nice. And right now, any any bands that you're into that are not your own, that like new music that inspires you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, gosh, it's funny. I don't listen to as much power metal nowadays like I used to, although it's a huge influence on me, obviously. 
but um i listen to a lot of like doom metal a lot of gothic metal mm -hmm. things like that a little more moody so i'd say like alsace is a is a big band that i've been listening to a lot lately um a local actually a, a band that's not too far from us dr smoke love them uh ravenous from Cam canada is amazing uh lords of the trident um Although both of those two are power metal bands. Uh, yeah, those are just some bands that I've been listening to a lot lately. Yeah, I wouldn't say Empress is a power metal band. I would lean more into the symphonic metal than power metal. I know it's like the difference can be like a little, maybe the album cover looks mm -hmm. a lot like power metal, symphonic metal, but uh, I think the, to me, the sound of Empress is more uh, symphonic metal sounding. Uh, so if you, would have to like go on tour with a band like and open for them uh, which band would it be and why i would say uh if i could pick any band be epica just because they've been so influential in so many ways on on me personally um it would be such a joy to, to open for them yeah and if you and as a fan any concert that we, you would love to see as a fan just not not playing but just as a fan only yeah, there's a, a Japanese uh, metal band that I love called Versailles, and I would give anything to see them. Yeah, I, I haven't heard them. How, what 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 style do they play? That's a neoclassical power metal. Nice. So Fate Weaver, uh, the album, I know it's eleven tracks, uh, nine tracks. Sorry, uh, is there any? What are is there any like constant themes to the record, uh, or like a story behind it? Yeah, so there's there's no story that um, that links everything together, but I would say it all kind of follows, although I didn't plan it this way, they all ended up following the theme of fate. And um, okay. I think that for many reasons, when we were writing these songs, I think destiny and fate were kind of on my mind. And without realizing it, they all kind of worked their way into the songs in, in various uh, ways. So yeah, I think fate, you know. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it it sounds like a hopeful record and it flows really well. And you know, it's it's always uh scary when you're putting a debut album and you're a new band, see how people react to it. So right now, what are the the plans for the band? Are there some upcoming tours uh that coming your way? Yeah, so we have some things that we are just uh finalizing some details on. So I can't mm -hmm. confirm them just yet, but Not um yet. <laughs> Yeah, but we are planning on uh, bringing our live show to new places very soon. Nice. And uh, I know the album is out digitally, but can people also get it physically right now or just digitally at the moment? Yeah, no, they can uh, They can absolutely get it uh, physically if they go onto our website, uh, www.empresslegion.com. Um, on our web store, they can order a physical copy as well as you know T-shirts and hoodies uh, right there. See these or do you have vinyl as well? not vinyl uh, no vinyl yes. yet expensive yeah <laughs> it's expensive for the vinyl so uh so yeah bar you know barbara uh uh i want to thank you you know taking time to talk with me and talk about empress uh i think a, a lot of people that would like symphonic metal would dig this band it really reminds me of all those bands that you mentioned the epica the night wish there was a time in the 2000s that there was a lot of like symphonic metal uh, oh, another one, Within Temptation. Mm -hmm. That's another one that the, the, the music of the band reminds me of, like that style of Within Temptation. Uh, so yeah, I think people that like symphonic metal uh, would dig this uh, album. So uh, anything you would like to say to the people watching the fans? Yeah, no, I'd say um, thank you so much for all the, the wonderful amounts of support that we've received. We can't thank everyone enough or express our gratitude. And the, uh, the, you know, the best is yet to come. We're just getting started. No, yeah, it's first album. So there's room for uh, for more and, and seeing where the band uh, goes from here. So uh, Barbara, uh, thank you, you know, for taking time of your of your day to chat with me a little bit. So everyone. Check out Empress. I'm going to show the picture of the album once again. Uh, this is Empress Fate Weaver. Uh, go to their store. I'm going to put the link in the bio so people can go to it and see it. And, you know, uh, uh, we need to uh, listen to new bands and promote new bands because uh, there's older bands that are retiring and we need metal to keep, keep on. 
it, and and right. mu new music is always good. You just I, I think there's people that complain that there's no good music after high school, but I, I think it's just they people get lazy and stop like trying to listen to new mm. things. But it's easier now than ever with streaming services. Like you can listen to more music. It's more accessible now than it was when, uh, like in the 90s or the beginning of the 2000s, to, to say the least. Hmm. No, that's so true. Yeah, no, very accessible. So, uh, Barbara, uh, oh, uh, thank you for your time. And until next time, people, this is Hector, the shield doing a couch. And I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and good night.